Hi guys, welcome to this session in Microsoft Access. In this module, I want to show you how you can create a simple database using Access. So first of all, I'm on the home page and I'm going to click on blank database. Now in Access, you need to name the database first. So try and avoid double clicking on that icon. So I'm just going to call this staff and it's going in documents. Click on create and then by default you get a table. Now in Access you have tables, queries, forms, reports, macros and modules. These are called objects. So first of all a table. Now the default setting is to show your table a bit like a spreadsheet where you can click to add fields, columns like so and you can just move it along across there adding each data type that you require. What I tend to do is just knock that off, don't have anything there, and create your own on the Create tab. I'm going to Table Design, where you can do exactly the same thing, but with a bit more detail, and you can also set properties. So the first thing I need to put in there is the field name, Staff ID. Now when I tab across, that's going to default to short text, but I want this to be an auto number, so it's automatically going to increment by one. I also want it to be the primary key, so it's a unique identifier. So then I'll have first name, that is short text, that allows you up to 255 characters per column, so you can see it per, per cell, so you can see it there, 255. I don't really need that for somebody's first name. So it's good practice to knock that down. I'll put that to 50 characters. Surname, same sort of thing. That's going to default to short text and 255. Now you might have a longer surname that'll go for 75 characters. Now, if you don't change this, Access will allocate 255 characters whether you type them or not. So then I'll have address city postcode and we'll have a date join field date joined and date of birth field now that's going to be a date time field and so is this one so i'll just click on there drop that down select date time You've got date time there, you've got extended for more accurate date times, but I'll click on that one. Now with the dates, I always recommend that you restrict the type of entry that you can get. Before I can do that though, I need to save this table. So I'll just save and I'll call this TBL. So TBL is the qualifier um, staff. So I'll put for that and then I can now come down to the properties area at the bottom, field properties, and select the input mask line. And go to the right there, you've got a three ellipses. Click on that, and it gives you the option to set this format. So if you click in there, that's how it's going to look in the column. So you can't actually type anything other than that. And I'll click finish there, and you get a series of zeros, which basically means there needs to be an entry. The entry in this case is required. So I would have to put 01 for January, not one, and 01 for the first, etc. etc. I'll do that on the next one. Come down. Thanks. So I'll just click on save. Short time. Just checking that and then finish. So that's sorted that out. That's going to be nice and neat formatted. Now there are some rules that you can put at this level. So date joined must be after date of birth. You can't allow somebody to do that the wrong way around. So what you can do is you can go up to the top here into the property sheet and set a rule that compares those two together. So validation rule. So if I click onto that line, again, I've got an option at the end there, which opens the expression builder. So basically, I can use these fields here. So date joined must be greater than, I'm going to say greater than, it could do equals to, but just greater than the date of birth field. That's the rule. Okay to that. 
and then what you can put underneath that the text that will come up if that rule is broken i'll just put check date that's what's going to come up if that's broken so all i want to do there i can get rid of that now i can also put rules on the actual fields themselves so date joined you could put a rule down here which might be greater than today but if you're entering data retrospectively that will break the rule all the time so it's counterproductive so you just better watch what you put there but you, you also got some options here so if i click on the city field i can set a default value there so if i set default value for the city field say if i go leads that means most people are going to be in leads it's in this database say this company we're talking about now is in leads so lead is already there and as I add a new record, it will appear. If I don't want these, I can just select something else. Now, these are the things down the bottom there. I'll come back to it at a later date. But for now, I'm just going to save that and have a look. Click on View. So there's my columns. There's leads look already in place. And then it's ready to accept the first record. So I'll tab across. I'll type my name. Let's say I live at one red road. Leads is already there, so I can tab past it. LS21 to the F. Date joined, I'll say today. Date of birth, 21st. See there, I just type the number 081990. Um, now that is the record. When I press tab again, it'll come onto the next line and it's ready for me to do another one so i'll just do another person one other person dave jones two red road but this guy does not live in leeds so i'm over typing that with bradford and ed two one er date joined the 21st 08 2003 date of birth 0101 1980. Tab off. Now, if I do one more person, and let's try and break the rule. So I'll do the dates, I'll change the dates so it's wrong. So I'll go for John Smith, pressing tab to Red Road. But he does live in Leeds. So that's an LS postcode. So date joined, I'll say 0101 Date of birth, I'll put today's date in, see what happens. The message that I put in the properties box, OK can't be born after I've joined. So I'll just change this to something for 2000. So I'll just say 1980 again, and I'll tab off that and it should let me do that. Now in Access, you don't need to save data inputs. If I close this down, it sits in this object window. If I double click it, everything's still there. I didn't press save. What you do have to save though, if I open up this, now I've changed that, that sort of width of that column. When I close this, it's only asking me to save the fact that I did that. I'll say yes. When I open that again, it, it maintains that gap for the postcode, which you can then bring back in. Like so, double click, close it again. What to see that change so you don't have to save data input now to create a second table i'm clicking on create and still doing table design this time we'll do a list of courses so i'll call this course id and i'll have this one as an auto number as well and i'll also set this as a primary key primary key and then we'll have course level 
and then date of training. But what I also, that's a date time, date time. I have to save this as TBL courses, TBL courses, clicking OK to that. And then I can do the input mask that we've just done. Once again, input mask, short date, finish. So that's set. I'll just save that again. Now I need a field that's going to link these two together. So staff ID. Needs to be a number field because it's set as auto number in this table. So that's how that is, that's an auto number. Now, if I just save this for now, go back into it and let's do a few items in here. So we'll go Excel, level one. Um, now, can't really put a staff ID in there because I don't actually know the staff ID numbers. So what I really should do before I fill all this in is I can I'm going to do a lookup on there, but I'm also going to uh, link these together first. So I'll close that off. Go into database tools at the top, relationships. Adding both these tables in, so I've got staff table and the courses table. Just make that a bit bigger so you can see all the fields. Likewise, that's not too big. So I want to make a link between staff ID and staff id it comes up with one to many which is good so staff id will id from the staff table and staff id from courses table i'm ticking this option course referential integrity to make sure i don't create a, a member of staff in this courses table that doesn't exist in there that's what that does basically one to many one member of staff can have many courses or can do many courses i'll click on It can't make this because this rules. So watch this then. So if I click off that, see if it can make it there. So it, let, it doesn't let me do that in force referen referential integrity because I typed out this record, which I'll now be close this down because that would create a a record zero that doesn't exist in that first one. So if I just double click back into this line again to do that and tick that again it should let me do it now so it does let me do it so that's quite important that you set this up with that on otherwise it means you've got records in this table that are not in this table so you're relating these two tables together clicking okay to that so that's now set save that relationship and i can close this down so that relationship is now set for the whole database whatever else i do close that down now in courses, I want to go into courses in design. So I'm right clicking design on this staff field. I need a lookup. So it's going to tell me who these people are because at the minute, if I just show you, it's just a, a number and I don't know what that is. So in design, if I go down to the bottom, you've got this lookup option. It's defaulting to text box, which is what it's on now. If I drop that down, I'll go to combo box and it says table and query so i am going to look up at a table i have to tell it which table it is it's going to be uh, staff and it says the first column bound but i want to see i'll go for four columns four columns information i don't want the headers and it's got column width so i'm going to go two centimeters list width leave that on there roll short uh, should i say auto i'm going to put that to 10 centimeters and let's see how this looks so i'll save that have a look staff id should give me a list but not just the number that's okay that's all i want so now when i fill this in i can add a course a level and then select a person now the course, I could do a, a table with a list of courses in and then have a look up for, for that. So let's do that one. So I'll create another table. This is just going to be course. I don't need course ID and it's just going to be short um, text like that. I'm going to save. 
PBL courses. And I put a lookup on there just for my own use, to, so I know it's a lookup table. Key. And then in that table, I'm going to open it and I'm just going to start typing the courses. So Excel, for example, Word, Access, Outlook, PowerPoint. That'll do. Close that down. Go back to courses in design. So now where it says courses, I'll do a lookup and I'll do exactly the same. I'll look I'm looking up a table. So combo box is the one I want. Table's already there. Selecting a drop down, selecting courses lookup. Everything else could stay the same. Save that and then do go and have a look. So now I can select a course. I could also do a lookup for level. I'm just going to type a level. Today's the training day, so control semicolon is today's date. Staff ID, you select somebody. It just puts the number in, but you can see who that is. Now, if I tab off that and select another course, I type access in there, level two, tabbing across. 2102-2024, staff ID 3, and that third, third person is John Smith. So now that's filling that in. So we've got three tables, and we've got one of them being a lookup table. But we've done two lookups, in effect. Now I want to create a form that's going to be based on this, because that's what I want to input through. I don't want to input through the tables. So I'll click on Create. Now Form. I've got that selected. So let's see what happens when I click on this. Form. The default is it's picking up that and it's picking up the relationship. So it can see straight away that I've done one course. And if I go on to the next record, he hasn't done any. He's done one. So now I can use this form. So I'm going to save this form. But it's looking at the table staff. So just get in front of this. Click OK to that. And it sits there in the object window. Now that's what I should use. So if I if I do a new course, all the lookups and everything are still there. So I'll do a word course. I'll do level two. Um, press tab. Today's date. And I'll just go on to the next record, the next person who hasn't done any courses yet. So as I drop this down, let's say it was Outlook, level one, date of training, 21-08-2023. Right, so now if I close this form, I go to courses, everything I've been adding, look, Outlook and Word is been adding in there. Staff, I haven't had anybody else in the staff table, but the course table has been populated through this form, like so. So that's all I want to talk about so far on this session. I'll build this database up on future videos, but hopefully this has got you going, and I thank you for your time, and I'll catch you on the next one.